year since any of your guys played in a hostile road environment. What are you expecting from that kind of challenge? Um, well, it's, it's a, it'll be a typical environment that we get. Like, um, it's the game they mark on their calendar. It's the game they're excited to play. It's, uh, uh, if you look at, my guess is, every team we play on the road, their highest attended game would be our game. Like, it's just what it is. That's playing here. That's what makes it unique and special. And, you know, winning on the road has really significance here because it's not, you're paying, playing against their best, their most excited, their most engaged in, in their laser focus. That's what you're playing against. And, and I would expect the same, um, you know, the tape that I've watched, uh, um, Notre Dame, the games they lost, they just miss shots that they normally make because they're not going to change how they play. So they, you know, I showed the guys a bunch of shots they missed in some of these games. Like, they don't miss those, and especially at home. At home, their shooting percentage is better. You talk to mature, all experienced players. Do you anticipate this being a good team that plays on the road? I don't know yet. We'll see. It's uh, all these experiences when you've got new teams or learning experiences. Um, the one thing I've said to the whole group is, Look, there's no reason. I'm telling you how we need you to play. If you can't play the way I need you to play, the team needs you to play, come and see me. We can talk it through. But I'm, telling, I'm giving you the answers to the test. I'm not going to yell and scream. I'm just going to sub you. If you're not doing what this team needs you to do, you just get subbed. That's the great thing about having depth. Um, you know, we've got a lot of capable players. Now, you, there are no excuses. Um, I always say you're responsible for you. I heard the other one, there's no one going to rescue you. You got to do this. So block all the clutter out and rescue yourself. Go play the way you're capable of playing. Most of it's just you're going to go fight. I'm going to be there before. I'm going to play with unbelievable energy and spirit. My game is going to lead other guys to play harder. Or does my body language lead us not to play harder? You know, and that's, that's all we've been talking about. Now, I like the team, and like I said, we, what I do every year, you try to hold guys accountable to what their best is, not what they choose to bring every game. You're, here's your best. And we're still not there with a bunch of the guys, really. Even, even the guys that are playing a lot. Like I said to one of the guys, you play like that, you're not going to play as much. You're, you're better than that. You hold yourself to a better standard. Consistency has been an issue for Keon throughout his career. At what point is that just who he is, or do you still think he can turn that corner? Right? I don't think as a coach you ever settle. Um, now, there comes a point that if you want it more for the player than he wants it for himself, and I'm not saying that's the case with Keon, um, but that's when it's an issue. That's not the case here. I mean, this kid is a thoughtful, caring, he's got a great heart, but you got to take what someone else wants. You got to take it. They're not going to give it to you. Um, I say this, what do you do when you're not scoring the ball? Well, just let me score, not just, I'm not talking to him. I say this to all the players. What do you do when you're not scoring the basketball to help us win? What, what else are you going to do? That's why you, you have winning teams. You got guys that have a bad night shooting, but they rebound, they block shots, they dive on the floor, they take two charges. Uh, Anthony Davis walks in at halftime in the national championship game. I can't make a shot. You guys score the ball. I'm going to rebound, defend, and block shots. And he was the outstanding player going one for ten. That's hard, though, because what he did is harder than just let me shoot more. Let me get more shots, and I'll show you. That's the, the hard thing for not our guys, all these players, to understand. That's the, the challenge of this as a coach. I'm never, I grabbed the one guy and said, I'm not letting you slip back. We've worked too hard, you've worked too hard to get yourself to where people are saying, wow, he's da 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 da. Within one game, you know what they start saying? Well, is he that or is he this? Which one is he? Now you got him confused. That it's their responsibility to come 
to fight and play with energy. I coach basketball. If I have to coach emotion and enthusiasm and energy, we're not a good team. Um, I, I, let me throw one other out. Lance was unbelievable yesterday in the meeting, his body language, his enthusiasm, and I stopped the team. And I said, you played two minutes yesterday. Were you happy? No. I said, you didn't even look at me after the game. You walked through. I get it. But you know what? When his opportunity comes, he's going to be ready because he's not listening to people try to blame other people. And he will, at some point, he'll have a breakthrough because that's how you got to be. All right, it wasn't my game, but next game will be, and I'm coming to practice to do this, and I'm going to make him play me. I'm going to make him play me. It's all that they go through. The good news with us is we do have veterans. Now, we need a couple of the young guys. You know, we got to get Bryce to be more consistent, to bring it to every practice, so that's who he is. Because you can't, as a coach, who's he going to be today? Now, do you play that guy or do you say, game's too close, I better wait? I can't guess. Who is this? And so he's working his way through this because we need Bryce to be that next level team because he gives us a physical presence. And I'm talking near the basket. I'm not talking, he, he gives us another post up guy who can score from 14, 15 feet, but he's got to come every day. And it's part of the process. I love him, I love coaching him. But your question about one player would be for me, do I say, well, it's going to happen next year? Or do I keep coaching him? He gets frustrated, he gets uncomfortable. Do I keep coaching? Or do I say, let's just do this next year. You just sit here, your time will come. I've never coached that way. I've never coached that way. So you're asking me about one player, it's all of them. Um, I have a vision of where I think guys can be. Most of it stops them within their own mind. A lot of that is because of what they're hearing. They're hearing and reading and, and, and then all of a sudden they have an avenue to escape to. It's everybody else. When they don't have that avenue, they figure it out. Like they, you know, they understand, I got to do this. It's on me. It's not on anybody else. That's what you want to hear as a coach. And then you want to walk in the office and look out and there's a guy getting extra shots up. Now you know, okay, he's putting this on his own shoulders. He'll break through. A lot has been said about the string of seven tune-up games. What did you learn about your team during that? Well, you know, again, building some continuity, building some uh, uh, confidence, building some individual players up to where they understand now you got to take it to another level. Every game has its own personality. This Notre Dame game is going to be different uh, than the Ohio State game, which is going to be different than the Louisville game, which is going to be different than the game at Kansas, which is different than the game with, the My or with Ohio or with Duke. They're all different. Um, but we, you know, we, I think, did what we were supposed to do. I think the last game I was kind of disappointed, but they just played harder. And that's a good lesson. It's a good lesson that you play harder, anybody can beat you, or they play harder than you, and they did. John, I hear coaches, including you, say practices are better when it's competitive, good against good. Why doesn't that apply to games where instead of a tune-up, you're challenged? Well, my, I don't know if you see what I say on all these kind of games. You're playing against your own best. That's who you're playing against. You're not playing against the opponent. It's easy said, but here's the thing. These kids are not robots. They're not machines. They have issues. They have girlfriends. They have class. They have stuff they have to do. Uh, they don't sleep well. Something happens. They get sick. They got the sniffles. They're not machines and they're not robots. The good news is you want to learn a lesson and still. <laughs> we played Ohio U or Miami of Ohio my first year. You all remember that game? We were down what? 18. Okay, we were down, oh, I remember. We were down 18. And Charlie Coles, who's a great friend of mine, we come back and win on a buzzer shot that John Wall 
to that point in his life, had never made a game-winning shot. He made it in that game. We win. And I was sick. I'm like, we got to be better than this. we got really good players. This is going to be a process. And Ray Oliver came up to me and looked at me and said, could have been worse. You could have lost. When they went up to Charlie Coles, they said, you, you were up 18 and lost the game. He said, why don't you go ask that guy? He has NBA players, and he was down 18 to us. And he was such a good friend, you know, that I took it that way. But, you know, this, this, this is building a winning mentality that you expect to win, and everybody expects you to win. You know, and it's, you know, they, we've gone through these schedules before. I mean, we played Evansville two years ago. What happened to that game? We got beat. And that schedule was similar, really similar to this point, to this schedule. I mean, may have been weaker than this schedule. That team went on from that environment, those games, my opinion, could have won a national title by the end of the year. COVID shut us down. Tyrese, Emmanuel, Ashton, Nick, EJ, Nate. I mean, here you go. That team could have won a national title. We lost to Evansville, played the same schedule we just played to this point. It's the same. Utah Valley. I mean, there was, if I remember right, um, Austin P. Who? Same schedule that we're playing now. We played them. So it is a process. We go through it. And uh, I'm just trying to go step by step. I want to skip steps, but I just know I can't. And let me say this. I have not figured this team out yet, especially offensively. John, to that end, I know some fans are wondering, they see Kellen find that rhythm in the first half offensively, and then in the second half, not so much. Well, he's a 2,000 point scorer at Davidson, but his role is different here. Well, there was one point he passed up a shot, and I called him over, and I said, the next time you're coming out. Now, let me explain to you, all of you. Like, you hear me say, if a guy doesn't shoot the ball, I take him out. And you say, well, this would be the greatest guy to play for. He takes you out when you don't shoot? Even if you shot an air ball the one before, you get another shot and drive and turn it over? throw. It. You shoot the ball. But you don't understand, I'm asking them to do the hardest thing in this game to do. They'd rather do, 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 drive and throw it to you and put it on you to make the shot. Because this is the hardest thing to do is make baskets. And that's why I'm on them. But my point being, as the year goes on, they're not feeling the heat of it. They know I got to take this. They know I got to be comfortable with this. They know, fall back on your training. You've taken 10,000 shots. We do a five minute drill. You're getting 100 shots in five minutes every day. So do that over a period of time. All of a sudden, you're shooting thousands and thousands of shots. John, there's been a lot of turnover at the top level administration at the University of Louisville. You, that should give you a greater appreciation for the stability that you've had at the top level here. How important is that for you as a basketball coach to have that stability? Well, everywhere I've been, um, it's been pretty consistent. Um, well, when I was at UMass, Michael Hooker left to take the um, – North Carolina job, but that was late in our run. Um, Memphis was pretty steady in here, so I wouldn't know what it feels like to have to go through that not knowing stuff, but um, I'm not staying up. But look, I, I'm not, I barely watched a bunch of college games. If I'm home, I'm watching Alaska Alaskans back on. And, Life Below Zero was great last night, first show. You know, building in Alaska is not bad, off the grid stuff. We're probably, I'll move when I'm done coaching. I'll be off the grid somewhere in Alaska. You won't even know. I still am alive. About Kellen again, he's only committed two fouls all season. Who? Kellen. Is that, how is he as a defender? Do you need him? He's doing okay, but he's also, his last few games, he's averaged, uh, Zero rebounds. That's hard. Because one is going to bounce to you. 
especially if you're playing 28 minutes a game. It's hard to get zero. Now, one thing he does, he blocks out. So maybe I should say just keep blocking out. We're, we're doing fine rebounding. Sometimes you got to accept what guys are. But I love coaching him. I'm just telling you, he's having a ball. The guys, look, you know, uh, this is hard. I hold guys accountable. I mean, whether we're in practice, I'm not taking less than their best. Um, you know, the season starts to drag. It makes it even harder. you got to figure out stuff. But um, he's doing great. Davion, having him back is great. Um, you know, Sabir stepped back last game. Um, you know, having Keon, Jacob, um, Damian, Oscar still having Lance ready to go, Bryce ready to go. I mean, it's, you know, yesterday we, we had a little more of a competitive practice. That's an advantage for us. But we were sick the week between us and Southern. We, I thought we did good conditioning. But the reality of it is we lost our competitive edge. We did.